Good morning. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Oh, well, it is Saturday morning on October 17th, uh, 2020. You are on uh, the RC Sub Guys live channel. Uh, we're going to be talking about RC submarines today. Uh, wanted to preface everything by saying uh, big apologies for the the missed events uh, in the past there. Um, as I said in my uh, little write-ups there, uh, not really much of an excuse other than I'm busy and um, totally forgot about them, but hopefully that won't end up happening again. Um, got lots of stuff going on. Um, probably one of the uh, biggest things you're actually seeing uh, around me. I've got my shop moved from my house. Now, uh, for those of you that have followed me uh, throughout the course of the years, you'll know. Uh, here, let me get this set up over here. <clears throat> there we go. You'll know that uh, I worked out of my house for the longest time, and it was uh, just recently that I uh, rented uh, the facility that I am in right now, which is fortunately just like a mile away from my house, so I can, I can literally walk to it if and when um, I need to. But I made the decision to move my, my home shop where I did my sub builds to the shop that I'm renting, which was previously set up only for uh, production work and for inventory. So what I wanted to do was kind of start things out and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour uh, of the shop as it is right now. We'll kick that off while people get uh, signed into the channel. So as we go out, again, just wanna say thank you to everyone for joining me. Let's, uh, let's start things out in the front of the shop. So this is my new uh, inventory area. Uh, Jason, uh, my new guy, Jason Butterfield, who handles all of the packing and everything. This is his work area where he does all of the waybills. This is where we do all of our packaging for uh, all of the kits and everything. So we've, we've moved everything out uh, into this area and it's a much better use of uh, space. We've got things all set up nice and organized. Um, can highlight some of these, uh, these kits that I've got going on here. Um, odds are good. This, uh, this, uh, 214 might be coming available. That's, uh, going to be a uh, ready to run boat. So keep your eyes out for that one. Um, we've also got our beautiful one, one scale Russian typhoon master patterns uh, that are nearing the point where we will be uh, going to molding shortly. Now this is based off of the 3D files and if uh, you followed my channel before you'll see this is the 3D printed model that uh, you can buy the files for and you can print out yourself. But the, the demand and interest was uh, so great uh, and people did not necessarily have the capability to print out their own boats. They wanted to know if it'd be possible to get a uh, fiberglass hull. And that's what this is gonna be all about. So 1144th scale, it's a beautiful size. We're gonna be uh, smoothing this all down for a perfect finish. We're gonna be scribing in some additional details that aren't uh, found in the CAD uh, files. And this will be a beautiful size. Um, well, that was weird, sorry about that. Had a bad connection there for some reason. Uh, um, uh, 1144 scale Ohio to go uh, in conjunction with this. So looking forward to that. Um, off on the side here, you can see, uh, we'll see if anybody can recognize this. Any, any takers there? This is something I started uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, yeah, Lotus, there you go. This is the, uh, the, the Lotus submarine from, I think it was a spy that loved me. It was a spy who loved me. Um, 
this will make a really cool RC boat. And we're, we're working on finishing up these master patterns finally and molding those as well. Um, let's see, what else do we got going on here? Um, Mobius Skipjack. Uh, this will be an RTR model uh, as well eventually when I get a chance to finish this up. This was originally built by Steve Neal uh, out of California. He did a really good job um, putting it together. Um, I will be doing some work to the cylinder, um, replacing the poor damaged prop, this resin prop, with uh, a nice white metal prop. It'll be fully ready to go. Um, working on this for Dan out of Australia. This is the, the talent. Um, this is uh, an old shear line kit that uh, Matt with Beck's model is now producing. So if you like the looks of this, you can uh, order that kit off of my website um, along with uh, Trafalgar and uh, Akula as well. Um, I picked this up as well. This is going to be a, uh, uh, a, uh, a, a, a an RTR boat as well. This is a Seawolf. And uh, I think this was produced by HMK. Uh, Eric Kloss put this one together and that'll be finished up eventually. Um, speaking of, does anybody recognize this hull? Any takers? The prop might give it away. Um, we were speaking about it a little bit earlier. So uh, through Dave Merriman, I actually ended up with the uh, molds for the old Copeland, Ohio. And uh, that's what this is. Um, the, the mold actually spit out a, a decent product here. Um, we're going to eventually uh, when we get around to it clean this all up and remold it and uh, eventually we will have a 96 scale Ohio to offer. Um, also picked this up recently another 135th scale Disney Nautilus model kit. Um, it had been started by the previous owners in good shape it's a generation one so the first generation of, uh, of Nautilus these are beautiful, obviously, for static display, but they make absolutely gorgeous RC models as well. I'll be listing that fairly shortly as well. So, hey, that was a lot of, of stuff uh, talking about there. Let's see here. Um, NAC 3D. Want to do a collaboration? Well... That would be cool. If you would like to uh, reach out to me by email directly, um, that'd be awesome. We'll, we'll exchange some information and uh, see what we can do to end up uh, working together. This, uh, this whole 3D thing is really, really taking off. Um, people absolutely love it. It's a great way for people to uh, get into the hobby uh, a little bit cheaper uh, than they would otherwise. Uh, let's go into the back, into the shop. I'll show you what I got working on here. Um, all my small parts are arrayed through here. And uh, that's the, the shop. This is where we do our production work and uh, where I am now undertaking all of my builds. Um, obviously, this was all open before and I couldn't bring all of my cabinets from the old shop. So I went on Craigslist and I found these old kitchen cupboards for sale for really cheap. Um, Gosh, you know, I'm, I, I love them. The, they're all hardwood with, with granite counters. Who, who can say they've got granite counters in their shop, you know? Um, it, was, it was cheaper than, than building, you know, melamine countertops. It was crazy. I was exceptionally happy with how all that turned out. Um, what do we got going on? So Mike, uh, Mike Martin, I saw you sign in there. I don't know if you're still on, but this is what I'm working on for you. This is a, a modified version of an OTW dive module. And uh, I had started this a little while ago. And when you reached out to me for one, I, I figured this would be perfect for you. So um, all the OTW components, but I've, I've made it more efficient. And what I've actually done is I've moved the pump components from the, the, the forward part into the back so it's all 
um, efficiently arranged here with our, our two rear servo outputs. But what that allows us to do is to reserve the forward compartment for batteries uh, and uh, remote switches. So with the OTW modules, typically you would see an external battery that would live in the wet area of the boat. And um, that means you had to have waterproof connections uh, and took up more room uh, in, the, in the boat. This will allow the uh, basically any size battery you want because it'll be a huge compartment to live internally. So it'll be completely self-contained, which makes it exceptionally easy for testing purposes uh, when you dunk that uh, boat in there. So far, it's turning out really, really well. I anticipate having this finished up early next week. Uh, if you got any questions about that, Mike, reach out to me and uh, I can fill you in, but I'm super stoked. These are all brand new uh, components. It's not used or anything, but um, yeah, looking forward to having that uh, all done. Something else that I'm uh, working on here right now, and it just looks like a bundle of uh, parts, is, is my own version of a watertight cylinder. Now, I just saw Merriman chime in there, and his cylinders are basically the, the, the standard by which all other cylinders are measured. And uh, what's ending up happening now is we're, we're seeing we're going to have to go to some sort of like a hybridized production um, scenario because demand is just really exceeding our capability uh, of production. And this is what I have come up with, uh, my own design based on uh, my experience and uh, based on the work of people like David, who um, kind of paved the way for everybody else, um, it's going to have, I'm not going to go into too many details here, but it's going to have uh, a new sealing system um, that'll seal both um, vacuum and overpressure inside the cylinder. Um, it'll be modular in that you can have different diameters of ballast tanks uh, set up and uh, it'll be fully user configurable in either dynamic or static diving capabilities. So uh, there you go, Subdriver Mark III. Eventually, uh, soon, we're going to have this uh, available. I'm pretty excited. The biggest thing is, of course, this is going to make manufacturing much more streamlined um, while offering a, a great product at the same time. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, some of you... Oh. We're back, man, we're having problems today. I was saying I enjoyed running a surface craft and the primary reason is that my neighbors here run uh, sailboats, surface boats, and uh, the water is rather murky, so not very suitable for uh, RC. But can anybody, and if I've already told you, don't, don't spill the beans, but anybody recognize this boat? You must, come on, it's super. No, well. Shark, yeah, you can yell shark. Anybody remember the name? It was over right on the side of the boat. You could probably see it from Jaws. Yeah, there you go. The Orca. Quince boat. Uh, you can see the, the shark Jaws on the front there. So I bought this, basically, the hull ready to go uh, off of, of eBay. It's ready for all the RC gear. Uh, I'm going to redo all the lights. Like, look at these crazy Chinese people running like to scale these cables would be like an inch and a half thick but uh, I'll redo all of the lighting and everything but it's got a full interior in there um, I think it'll be really cool just the kind of thing you just bring to the pond dump it in and forget about it now here's something I, I, I really wanted to show out to, to you guys typical Chinese quality. So this is all cool. It's, they did a really, really good job, right? Um, and then, then we look down here and we got, oh, look at this beautiful brass rudder. That's really, really nice. And look at the, that propeller. Oh, gorgeous. Except, uh, except watch this. Yeah. Yeah. It's hitting the support. So, uh, not the, uh, smartest of, of, uh, sharpest of, of knives in the drawer to have mounted the propeller in such a manner that it hits the rudder support and uh, does not 
spin, which is disappointing because this was not a cheap model, but uh, certainly within the realm of possibility for me to get fixed up. We'll get there. We'll get there. All right. Uh, here's something else for, for Mike and for Ed. So this is how fortuitous circumstance works. Um, if we take a look at this boat, this is a, a 148 scale arc model type seven. And uh, this was originally uh, sold to a gentleman by the name of Mike Martin who put the kit together. And Mike is online with us today. And um, he is somebody I hate because he did a, a, a as good or better of a job weathering up this boat than, uh, than I could have. And uh, he showed up to Subfest with this thing and uh, you know, basically put us all to shame. And, and he actually won best scale model at the uh, event for this boat. As, uh, as fate would have it, he was actually looking for a bigger boat. We did some horse trading. Um, it ended up in my possession. And Ed Frank, who had uh, commissioned me to build a boat, um, was given this information. And he seemed to be pretty stoked about this. So this is going to be undergoing um, some uh, modifications to the drive system. And additionally, we're going to be installing some uh, um, additional features in there. We're going to see if we can get some sound going. And if time permits, we're going to go back to playing with something like this. Now, this is a dummy torpedo that Mike had created, but it is going to be the basis by which we're going to see if we can get a 48 scale operational torpedo system installed in the boat and ready to go. Um, if any of you guys are interested, these ARC model kits, as you can see, build into absolutely gorgeous boats. This is all stock. There's no like enhanced photo etch or, or anything like that. Um, look at the just beautiful little details on here. Um, so it comes just basically out of the box like this. And, and I do represent these uh, kits. You can buy them off of my website. Um, I actually recently just got cleared out. I got another 12 on the way from China uh, right now. Um, these aluminum carry cases, by the way, are sold by Arc Model. I don't carry those. Um, they're very, very expensive, but man, uh, what a perfect way to move your boat around to make sure that it doesn't get damaged. And Mike even got a separate case for the, uh, the radio there. So that will be coming down next. This is the next project goes on the bench. Well, it's already on the bench. It'll get uh, started to get worked on um, first part of next week. Um, here's a neat boat. Uh, anybody recognize that one? Dave Merriman, you're, you're exempt. You can't guess because you already know. No? Yeah? Maybe? Sort of? Uh, Hunley. Yeah, H-U-N-L-E-Y. There you go. There you go. So this is going to be our newest uh, 3D CAD offering. Um, it is going to be available very, very soon. This is the prototype. Uh, parts, just checking assembly to make sure that everything works, uh, fits, and uh, doesn't interfere. And so far, it's going together really, really well. We're going to get some primer on this first part of next week and, uh, and see what that looks like. Uh, Nack asked about Sequest DSV. Yeah, check my product page. Uh, I sold that kit for a long time, and I'll be going back into production on that. Um, the molds ended up getting burned out because I, I think I sold about 30 or 40 kits um, and I did not have the time, energy, or resources to remold, but we're, we're going to bite the bullet and make that happen. What size is my lathe? It's this big. This big. I don't know. It's, uh, it's this big. Does that help? Well, it's an indicator table. That doesn't help anything. This is a cheap Chinese lathe. Um, it works okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, machine to to millionths of a of an inch degree accuracy. But for what I need it for, uh, it works really, really good. Um, this is something I'm playing around a lot 
more with. Uh, and this was Dave Merriman's suggestion for me to invest in. This is a, uh, a milling machine, obviously. But, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I never needed one until I got one, and now I use it all the time. It's very cool. All right. Um, anyway, I didn't finish with my Hunley. You guys are distracting me. So, um, yeah, these are going to be this is going to be offered as as uh, 3D files that people will be able to uh, to download and print themselves. Um, man, I'm going to see if I can take the top off with one hand. Probably not. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Oh, you all died. Okay, there we go. So this this is what the uh, the interior of that boat looks like, and it is uh, set up perfectly for a 2.5 inch diameter watertight cylinder. It just drops right in there. No need to create separate cradles. Um, the other thing that I want you to notice when I designed these files is, um, you know, we talked about me worried about hull deformation and, and warping. Um, but all of these bulkheads are integral to the um, file, so that it's very, very rigid. That does not flex. And then over and above that, you've got these lips. Um, so this is a very, very rigid, very, very strong hull that should experience a, a minimum of, uh, of warping due to heat and, and that kind of a thing. And the way this is set up, basically, you, uh, you just drop the hull on and I'm, I'm not going I'm not going to be able to do this one-handed push it back those orientation pins line up and uh, and lock the lid down with uh, really no other need to do anything else this is um, gosh it's it's probably three feet long here and then there's going to be about another 18 inches of spar out the front with the torpedo on the front so it's going to be a sizable model um, somebody had asked about the scale. Well, really, it, it doesn't even matter because uh, if you're 3D printing it, you can print it to whatever scale you want. If you want a 10 foot long boat and you got a big enough printer, well, print it off, uh, you know, for 10 feet in size. All right. Um, just some really cool details in here. The, the rudder arrangement on the Hunley is, is really, really interesting. So, uh, the rudder goes back here, and you can see that bracket on the back. Um, this is all integral. I've redone this, so it's a separate piece. But there's an arm that comes out the back with another arm, like an L-shaped arm, and that swings back and forth and moves the rudder back and forth. It's really, really interesting, really unique. This is just going to be a really cool boat. Um, I'm looking forward to even just displaying it uh, as, a, as a potential display model eventually but um i think this is going to go over really well if you want a unique boat at the pond i don't think you get much more unique than uh, something like that one interesting thing about this it's got really huge dive planes that uh, are almost on the center line of the boat and uh, david consulted on uh, a uh, a project to build one of these and, and, and i'm thinking back was it tim smalley that owned that hunley um, I can't remember, but at, at any rate, you know, the, the challenge obviously with, with center mounted dive planes is you've got no ability to affect the pitch of the boat. So in this particular case, there's no aft dive planes. There's only kind of center mounted forward dive planes. So it'll affect depth, um, but not so much pitch. So you need to make sure that you, you, you trim the boat to be exceptionally statically stable. Uh, and operate at fairly slow speeds because if there's any odd uh, hydrodynamic forces affecting the the boat um, it could pitch it up or down and you'll have no way to correct that um, if it does prove to be an issue what i would like to do and what i still might do is uh go after my my nautilus heritage here and and make this rear prop on a on a gimbal and that would give you full pitch control without affecting the scale appearance of the boat. Uh, I'm not sure if Darren's online, uh, but I, again, I know Dave is, and he'll recognize these parts. This is a uh, seal delivery vehicle, and this will be a kit that we offer. Um, I'm thinking we'll, we'll probably go 
um, 3D and um, either cast resin or a, a, a hand epoxy glass layup for these. This, this is just printed rough just for fitment. You can still see I've got the supports on there. Um, gorgeous little prop though, really interesting. But yeah, seal uh, scale, seal delivery. And David Merriman's created a set up um, a cylinder, a dedicated cylinder for this boat. Um, really good job that Darren did on drafting these parts. All of these um, holes, these orientation holes, all line up to ensure that you've got perfect fitment uh, and alignment with everything when you do assembly and uh, and after you have it all put together. So, um, gosh, that is like it. <laughs> all the projects that I've got going on right now. Um, and it's a lot, but um, I think the, the, well, I know, the last thing, the other thing that I wanted to touch on and Dave, feel free to chime in on here. I touched, touched briefly, I'm gonna move this, on uh, cylinders. Now, cylinders are important because they are what drives the boat, obviously. Um, people purchase them to put them in their own hulls, uh, in the hulls that they bought from other manufacturers uh, for starter kits and that kind of a thing. So there's, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of them that uh, are in demand. And, you know, throughout the course of the years, David Merriman has evolved the subdriver uh, into a, a really superbly engineered product. And uh, together we kind of um, came up with this vision for the MSD subdriver, which is the current evolution of the subdriver. And again, a beautiful product. But as I mentioned, you know, we're at the point right now where I think demand is exceeding our capability to produce with the current uh, design. So we, there's going to be a couple of things that we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be bringing a lot more manufacturing in-house. So with, with three people working on production instead of just poor Dave, uh, in his shed trying to get this all put together for me. Hopefully that will increase our um, production capabilities and it will reduce the uh, production time. Now, there are quite a number of you right now with outstanding orders. I think there's like 11 of you and you've been waiting for a considerable amount of time and for that, uh, I thank you for your patience. Um, it is probably going to be at least another week uh, to two weeks before we've got the stock to complete those orders. Um, again, my apologies for the delay. Um, in an effort to mitigate, uh, you know, losing or, or, or breaking cust with customer expectations, I've suspended the sale of all subdrivers until such a time as I can replenish my stock. Um, it was always my vision and intention, and we did good for a little while, didn't we, Dave? Uh, for me to have stock of every product so I can ship it out within 24 hours. Um, we're not at that point right now. We're at the point where some subdriver orders are probably going on two months or a, a month. Uh, and uh, that's not acceptable to me. So I, rather than, uh, again, breaching with customer expectations and needs, uh, I am not going to be offering subdrivers for the immediate future. Um, but once we get uh, production caught up, inventory levels built back up, and the new Mark III subdrivers um, into production, uh, things will change. So if you are anticipating uh, putting an order in um, and you can't purchase a, a subdriver and you don't see your starter kit uh, available anymore, I apologize. Uh, it's not like it'll be like that forever. You can always reach out to me if you're good with the delay. Um, and, and it could be a month or something like that. Let me know and I'll put together a manual invoice for you. But uh, again, in the meantime, you won't be able to order directly from the website. So that's the tale of the sub driver. Um, yeah, now we can revisit the chats here. I got to see what I missed. 
we talked about the uh, the Hunley there. Let's see here. Did I miss anything important? Ch chime in if I miss something. Um, the skydiver. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. I get a lot of people say, you know, why don't you do this uh, exceptionally obscure sci-fi submarine from like the 1950s? Uh, why does nobody make that kit? Well, this is all about economics, people. Um, you're not going to find a commercial manufacturer manufacturing a product that they can't make money on. And I'm sorry to be a money-grubbing, uh, you know, Grinch, but uh, as much as I would love to, um, unless you're willing to fork out ten or twenty thousand dollars for my time, energy, and resources to research, uh, design, fabricate, uh, implement, and complete a model, um, it's going to be in your hands. So. Um, you know, if it was a different situation, if it was a model kit that was in high demand, then the investment makes sense because that uh, investment can be recouped. Um, you know, you talk about the skydiver, yeah, you know, there'll be people after that model, but is it gonna be enough to justify, you know, five or $10,000 worth of, of time and energy and resources? It takes a lot of model kits to recoup that uh, investment, so. Uh, if you're interested in something like that, I would try and find a talented uh, and bored individual uh, who's got lots of time to invest in putting that together for you. Or um, do as I did and many other people did. If you want it and it's not out there, build it yourself. The resources are out there. Um, the only thing lacking is your patience uh, and time and skills to get it completed. Uh, my first RC submarine I built from scratch with no previous experience whatsoever in building master patterns uh, or molds or RC submarines or anything. So if I can do it, you can certainly do it. There is no excuse. Uh, let's see here. Talked about the lathe, talked about Sequest. So Sequest is coming back out again. I've got to re-invest uh, in those uh, molds. Those are upstairs. Um, all right, we went back far enough. All right. Well, we went through everything. <laughs> um, I wanted to show this to you because uh, it actually forms part of my um, new cylinder design. So this is put out by a gentleman by the name of Tim out of the UK and Matt is good friends with, uh, with Tim. Uh, he does electronics and what he's created here is a water detection module, okay? And um, basically the, the way that this works, you've got uh, three inputs. Uh, and two um, rotary pots on there. Um, you feed power into the unit uh, via this input. And then it's got uh, two outputs. One is the sensor, and you've got two uh, sensor prongs right here. And these would live, uh, in my design, in the tower of the submarine. And uh, there's multiple applications for this, but this will be one of them. Uh, so this is basically going to tell the unit when the model is in uh, DEXA wash or surfaced uh, state. So the tower is uh, emerged, it's uh, above the surface of the water. The other output is to a um, servo. And this servo is going to control the um, intake valve for the air, for the ballast system. The idea is uh, when the model is in a surfaced state, this servo would open the intake valve, air would be drawn from the surface, uh, pumped into the dry area of the cylinder, and then from there into the ballast tank to blow ballast and bring it up to full surfaced water line. When the model submerges, uh, the vent valve opens up, the entire model dives, and I'll show you what I've got going on here because I think this is a pretty slick system. This is my 
version of the uh, the bulkhead. Two servos, uh, one to vent the tank, and one is that air intake uh, valve that I was talking about. And this is going to utilize a pinch valve to control the uh, the intake there. But this is the uh, the entire ballast, and you guys are, can feel free to steal this idea. This was uh, originally kind of shown to me by uh, a gentleman by the name of Greg Sharp out of uh, Victoria, British Columbia. Uh, super simple rotary action on the servo. That arm simply lifts up. Uh, you got a spring loaded valve and up she goes. The cool thing about this is you could have a two and a half inch diameter cylinder or you could have a 10 inch diameter cylinder. The only thing you need to do is uh, extend this rod. Now, um, that rod in the middle there, uh, in this version is a, is a tube, but actually what I'm going to do in the production version or in my next prototype version 2 version, that shaft is going to be a solid round with a machined flat in it so that when that opens up there's a passage for air to get through and uh, that way it doesn't matter uh, where that is and it'll also take air in from the very tippy top of the ballast system. So that's it. The arm pushes up, opens up the valve, and uh, and down it goes. So that is pretty slick. Um, this is the, the intake. So this would go up to your uh, intake in your tower, and then it connects to the output on the uh, intake for the, for the inside, like this with the little hose. Looks like that. And uh, yeah, away it goes. Uh, this is uses the larger 12 volt air pump, so it'll have a, a faster rate of, uh, of blowing than the current version, which uses the micro pumps, uh, which is our six volt pumps. So I'm pretty stoked about this. Um, the other thing that I've, I've done is um, mounted two servos in the both end caps, the, the forward end cap and the aft uh, end cap. So you've got in the back your rear dive planes and rudders, and in the front you've got bow planes and torpedo doors or torpedoes or periscopes or whatever you want to put in there. Um, this is going to be the, the you know cylinder. Um, this gets mounted to it permanently. And the cool thing about that is um, David will be the first to attest to this wonderful stuff as uh, rotten tolerances when you get it from the manufacturer. Um, they're not very good at, at maintaining internal diameter tolerances. And so when Dave machines all of those end caps, and this is part of the production issues we're going into, every end cap is individually machined for a specific piece of polycarbonate. That's pretty labor intensive, uh, but it ensures a perfect fit every time. Um, I wanted to get away from that, and I went to this sleeve. Now, I control this. This is me, uh, and this face is perfectly flat, perfectly flush. Gets mounted to there. This uh, end cap simply slips on like this, and uh, in between will get sandwiched a uh, nice, thick, beefy O-ring. You bolt down with three bolts, uh, thumb screws, you put the tension on, and uh, you know, just like the Shearline version and the um, uh, OTW version, you control the tension on that face and um, it seals both internal pressure and external pressure. Um, you know, with the that inside seals, if you overpressure the inside, it can pop off the um, end cap. So this will be just a little bit different. The only drawback, the only one that I can think of thus far is that it actually increases the diameter of the cylinder by a quarter of an inch. Sticks out about an eighth of an inch uh, over here. This is also designed, by the way, for brushless motors mounted in the wet. I'm back. Man, I apologize for this like nasty connection I have. Anyhow, I didn't finish talking about the, the, the the water detector. So I talked about surfacing, and then, then when diving, the sensor detects water in the, uh, the, 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 the top of the sail, which would be um, above, 
the intake. No, wait, below the intake for the uh, the air. So it comes the the intake is down, detects the water, shuts off the um, intake valve, and um, now no longer will the pump be able to draw air and or water from the outside of the boat to pump into the dr <laughs> It draws air from the dry compartments, blows it into the ballast tank, you begin to surface, sensor detects uh, when the boat breaches surface, opens up the vent, and uh, just like Dave's super awesome SAS ballast system, but this is uh, automatically, uh, you know, mechanically, electronically controlled versus uh, utilizing a float. So really that's the only um, difference. And the other way that, uh, that this can be utilized is in water detection in the cylinder itself. So I think what I'll offer as an option is a, is a second separate unit. And you can have this basically put out um, almost any number of, uh, of things. It could, um, if it detects water, automatically blow ballast. Um, it could turn on an LED light in the sail so that uh, if you surface and you see, for example, a red light, you'll know that your cylinder is taken on water um, and you should probably get back to shore. Um, basically anything that has a servo output, you can make this control. So um, pretty cool. The pots on this, by the way, uh, control the two positions of the servo, where it starts and where it moves to uh, when it detects water. So. This will be a new product coming out here right away. I gotta get with Tim, I gotta get stock. I gotta pull a bunch of these in because uh, regardless of how those cylinders go, I think people will be interested uh, in putting those in their boats. So there you go. Um, that was some more stuff that I've got going on. Um, I've talked lots about stuff that I wanna talk about. Um, not very many questions for me this week or for the collective. Um, I don't think I've yet scheduled the next Dive Tribe meeting, uh, but for those of you who uh, are not Dive Tribe members, I highly recommend it. Uh, typically we got between like 10 and 14, 12 and 14 people, and uh, it could be beginners and it could be people who've been doing this for 20 plus years. And if you've got, uh, questions about your project, you've got questions about the hobby, you want to get into it, or if you're a completely experienced person who knows everything and simply wants to show off what you're doing, um, 49 bucks a year, a year, uh, and you get access to this. We meet every two weeks and uh, it basically is a the format of a live online video meeting. So everybody chimes in with their video cameras and we get to tour around people's shops, uh, see how they came up with solutions, uh, see what their problems are. Um, I think there's a few people on here who could probably attest to the value of that. Um, I would say as somebody who's been in this hobby for over two decades, I, uh, there is never one of those meetings that I don't walk away with uh, something new. Um, I do not attest to know everything and uh, those meetings certainly prove it. So uh, Dive Tribe Elite, that's what it's called. You can, uh, you can sign up on my website at the top. Uh, it's like join the Dive Tribe or, or something like that, that link at the top of my webpage. Um, get all signed up and then once you get into the members area, you'll see the link to the uh, appropriate meeting place and uh, Yeah, every two weeks uh, Hope a few of you manage to get signed up and uh, come on out and join us. There's um, a lot of value to it um, And on my homepage, by the way, if you haven't noticed it I've, I've installed a calendar app so you can see when the next upcoming meetings for YouTube live and for Dive Tribe are. So you can schedule your lives uh, around mine. How does that sound? All right, uh, a few more minutes for anybody with any uh, questions for me or for the uh, collective. And um, if not, I can let you get on with your day. Um, I do also, by the way, want to respond to the half dozen emails that I got uh, last night from uh, grumpy people saying, 
I live on the West Coast, and do you realize that 8.30 is 5.30 in the morning to me? Well, number one, these are recorded, so you're not missing anything. You'll always be able to get to it. Number two, you should be up for an hour and a half by 5.30 already. So really, there's no problem with that. And number three, I've got a life too. And uh, unfortunately, I need to schedule these kinds of things uh, around my life. It's the weekend, and uh, I've got family time planned. So 8.30 worked for me. Uh, I'm glad it worked for you guys, uh, and I do sincerely apologize if it did not align with your schedules. Um, I try to move the times around because I need to accommodate people on the West Coast, Central, East Coast time, as well as all of my customers and interested people uh, from overseas. So please do bear that in mind that the uh, Americas are not the only place in the globe with people who are interested in RC submarines. So there you go. Um, one last chance for people to chime in. No. Everybody knows everything. That's awesome. So, all right, next week, look for some progress on the Mark III subdriver. Look for progress on the uh, Type 7. Um, progress on the Hunley. If you look, uh, or if you want to look at what I do, I try, try on a, on a quasi-daily basis to update my forums, uh, forum.rc-sub.com. The link is on my website um, under the thread of yesterday's work, and uh, I'll put post, uh, post up pictures of what I did during that day. If I miss a day, please don't get grumpy. I'm doing the best I can. Um, we'll get updates uh, put out there to the best of my ability. So... There you go. Lots of uh, things coming down the pipes. Good stuff for uh, for everyone. Unless I see a comment pop up in the next few seconds, I am going to begin the sign off. Uh, it's Saturday. We got stuff to do. Um, hey, just a quick update to the last stages of it. The only thing I'm waiting on right now is my FAA medical certificate. Um, they've had all of my information since August, and it's now October. And I'm still waiting on my medical certificate. It's the only thing stopping me from getting my pilot certificate. Um, and if things go well, um, we're looking at buying an airplane. So uh, RC sub guy will uh, go mobile. Maybe we'll uh, be able to hit some more of these uh, regattas uh, and that kind of thing that uh, are not within striking distance by truck. We we'll might be able to hit them by plane. So. Stay tuned for updates on that. All right, guys. With that, I think I'm going to sign off. I'll let you get on with your weekend. Uh, enjoy it. Have fun with your boats. Have fun with your family. Stay safe during these incredibly uh, interesting times. And uh, if you need anything, by all means, reach out to me through my website. Uh, you can text me. You can um, um, email me any way you want. I'll be here for you. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus, drydocs.com. Thanks everyone. Catch you next time.